Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. This is a very special episode of Gotta Run. We're dedicating this show to all the ones we have lost to pancreatic cancer. In particular, Laurie Harris, a beloved member of the New York Flyers. Tonight, I have three special guests and a dog. The names are Dino Borelli from Project Purple, Alan Gardner, a former president of the New York Flyers, and Neil Levy, the beloved husband of Laurie Harris, as well as Paco, their dog. Welcome, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Dino, let's start with you. Before we get into Project Purple, tell us a little bit about your background. For example, something about your educational background and some of the experiences you had that led you into Project Purple. Well, Will, I uh, was a graduate of Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island, originally from Connecticut, Fairfield County, Connecticut. Uh, moved back to Connecticut after college. And in 2008, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And my dad was fortunate. He was a Whipple candidate. And only one in five people who are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer are eligible for the surgery. And my dad was the one in five. Wow. So in December of 2008, he had his Whipple. And he did six months of chemotherapy. And he was cancer free for about six months. And then in March of uh, 2010, he was re diagnosed with stage four uh, pancreatic cancer. And that's when the wheels kind of started to turn a little bit. Uh, I ran my first half marathon in the summer of 2008 with my wife up in Boston. Uh -huh. And I swore I would never run a road race ever again. I was active growing up and uh -huh. I played collegiate basketball, uh -huh. but I never ran. Mm -hmm. And when my dad got sick, it was just something that uh, became kind of my thing. I could just find clarity. And I had a lot of um, great ideas after running of things that we could do as a family, to uh -huh. not only to help my dad, uh -huh. uh, but help other people. When my dad was re-diagnosed in 2010, we started to formulate some ideas. I started to recruit some people. Um, and the other thing is I realized that I, I wanted to center things around running. Being an entrepreneur of owning my own financial services company, I kind of had that entrepreneurial mind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mindset and spirit. And I started to look around in the space and started to look around at running charities and realize that there are some charities out there that use running with various cancers that uh, that raise a lot of money. I kind of wanted to replicate and emulate some of those organizations and, and strictly use it for pancreatic cancer. Okay. So in 2010, in August of 2010, we, we uh, incorporated ourselves, actually September 2010. Fast forward to where we are today, where we're an official uh, marathon charity partner of the three largest U.S. marathons. Now, this is Project Purple. Project Purple, yeah. How did it come up with the name? Uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I think I was out on a run, actually, and purple is the color for pancreatic cancer. I knew that this was going to take a lot of time, a lot of people, um, a lot of money, um, and that's kind of a project. You know, there was a project to put this together, and, and originally we were going to work and, and work with many institutions. Kind of our mindset's been, you know, whether it's you know, a, a scientist in Nebraska, a scientist in Boston, in New York City, or overseas. We want to work with the best. So it's kind of a project bringing together the world's best doctors towards a cure of this disease. Mm -hmm. But also, you look at what we're doing where we're involved in so many races. It's somewhat of a project. You know, we, we're committed to running and using running as our main fundraising activity. Um, but so it's become kind of a project. So when you put project and purple together, it, it kind of fit, and, it, and it's, mm. it's been a marriage, a great marriage ever since uh, the mm -hmm. beginning. Cool. Okay. Alec, would share with us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm a city kid in my heart, born and raised in Brooklyn until I was seven, but then raised in Rockland County, undergraduate state school, we call UA now, University of Albany, and then law school here in the city at, at Cardozo. Uh, focus of my practice has largely been criminal defense, although I like to say I'm a baseball player without a contract <laughs> <laughs> because that's my, that's my real love. I started running uh, in really 2004. I ran a race in law school. They called it the race judicata, which is a Latin term, but I didn't really run any other races. I ran that in high top basketball shoes, as I recall. <laughs> but I was watching the marathon in the late 90s at like mile 23 and a half, 24 in the park. And it was later in the race, about five and a half hours in, and I saw a guy in a wheelchair pass an able-bodied runner. 
And, it was, and the whole experience was moving. Everybody watching all the different folks, men, women, different ages, different physical conditions, looking to complete this event. But that really caught me, and I said, yeah, I've got to do this once. And it took me a bunch of years to put in, and then I got into the lottery for 2004. And I got a postcard from Team for Kids about two weeks later, because New York Roadrunners is really good at that stuff. Right, right, right. And uh, so I signed up with them and worked with them, raised money for their foundation for three years. And then uh, I moved on and eventually uh, was asked to come to a workout with the Flyers. Uh, it turned out there was a whole slew of former Team for Kids mates there. And I kind of fell in place with uh, my running home. First year with the Flyers was 2008. 2008. 2008. Okay. And then um, eventually uh, I ran for president a uh, couple of few years ago, was president for a year, was asked to run again. The thing that really uh, has been probably the most moving experience though has been getting involved with Lori's race. Um, when we first started it in 2013, I always knew who Lori was, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know her, know her, because Lori was ubiquitous in the running world. You'd see her running in the park, whether it was a race, and she ran over 550 New York Roadrunner races in her running career. And she had that distinctive hair flow. And she had that, she had just this beautiful <laughs> countenance. Caught you right here with this photo. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have it too. Yes. Right. When you saw Lori running, she was, you could tell she was always happy. It was a joyous experience and it was infectious. You might have a cramp and you didn't if you saw Lori running. Um, <laughs> and then I got to know who she was. It was kind of odd. Facebook was more in its earlier stages, so it was more open. And I saw a post from Lori about uh, a home makeover that she'd had, right? And it was really cool. There was a clip, and she and Neil had had their living room redone. I scrolled further down, and I see that she retired. And then I scrolled further down, and I saw that she had announced that she had pancreatic cancer. It was 2011. She was, she was diagnosed. diagnosed then in 2011, and so this was sometime after that. I'm not sure exactly when, um, but I eventually reached out, and I got to know Neil. Um, and, and Neil and I, I feel like I've known Neil for 40 years, you know, like and, I felt the, now. and I felt the same way about Lori very quickly. She's a very unassuming, inviting, engaging person. And I say she's because I, yeah, she's I not here she's, with us anymore, but, yeah. you know, her presence is that kind of thing. Don't so make wanna, me cry, no, Neil. No, I want to <laughs> say something, though. No. What's that? I want to say that before you were president and the first contact that we had was, um, I believe it was the night before the 2011 marathon. Laurie had been diagnosed that August. Right. And neither of us knew who Alan was. He, he was like a regular person, not a high profile flyer or a president. Not like Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> but that night, the night before the marathon, we get a knock on our apartment in the city and this guy shows up, and this is the guy. He shows up, he introduces himself, says he's a flyer, and says that he wanted to visit, that he had something for us. He had two books that he brought with him. Uh -huh. And you may remember the names of the books. One of them was like a children's book, like the little train that could, no, the little caboose. The precious, oh yes, it was the little train, right. The little train that could or whatever. I know I can, I know I can. And the other was uh, Joyful Wisdom. Joyful Wisdom is written by one of the preeminent uh, Buddhist teachers. Okay. Uh, and it's about life and it's about death. Okay. Um, and it, it's just a wonderful book about dealing with fears and difficulties, the unknown, uh, written by a guy who is often tagged as the happiest man on the planet. And I just thought that, you know, I knew that Lori was going through some real difficult stuff. I knew she had a spouse, he had to be going through something yeah, too. Yeah, the whole family. So I thought, you know what, let me go say hello. By the time I left, I felt like I, I just said, I'd known them for about 40 years. Wow. It was just, you know, we had a lot of things in common, from running to kind of philosophical beliefs to Bruce Springsteen, you know, and mm. it's, it's funny because it's the Hope and Dreams 5K. Mm. And just when we were starting the first race, I just threw out the name as just a starting point. And Lori's like, I love it. My favorite song is Bruce Springsteen's Land of Hope and Dreams. It's a very rewarding experience to have been involved in developing that and 
getting the first event done while Lori was still alive. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And she made the most supreme effort that day mm -hmm. to get out there because mm -hmm. she was not well. She okay. was in a bad place. If I remember right, Neil can correct me if I'm wrong, she ended up in the hospital for about a week right after that race. Yeah. That's correct. She couldn't complete the course. She really couldn't run. We walked out probably about 200 yards, and then she's cut the course, and we cut over and cut back to the finish line. Wow. Um, and she announced all the winners and the prize winners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she called out the raffles. Yeah. And in the photos, the smile on her face yeah, just yes. defines who she is. Yes. She persevered and got through that, I think, for everybody else, because she knew they were yeah, celebrating yeah. her. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was a thing of beauty. I've learned a lot about life, and I guess death. From Laurie. Through Laurie and, and, and through my friendship with Neil. Yeah. And then, this guy came into the picture. All right, before we go back to uh, Dino, let's uh, turn attention to Neil. Thank you, Will. Neil. Thanks for having me and also Paco. Paco. Is, oh, well, Paco got a <laughs> uh, attention. Up. I think He's he wants to do for something. Another, he wants a treat. He wants a treat. Do you yeah. have a treat for him? Not enough. <laughs> well, as I was mentioning before we got on the air, the f first and only time I saw Laurie was on the tramway. I was on, on it. I was a volunteer that day. Right. And she was surrounded by family. Okay. And the whole place was obviously crowded and everybody's eyes were on you, on, on Laurie. And she had a smile on her face, you know, it was very positive. It's a little over a year and a half since she passed. Passed, yeah. okay. Un unlike um, Dino's dad, uh, Laurie was not able to have that, that whipple. the surgery. And I want to say something about Dino, because I've said this to Dino, that I really wish that he and Lori could have met, mm. because Dino is doing this amazing work, right? He's so committed to it. Project Purple. Yeah, yeah he's so knowledgeable and dedicated, and he's doing it with this passion and with his heart. Right. On my meeting of Lori, um, we grew up in the same suburban New York town, uh, Westbury, Long Island. We lived in different parts of the town. And then in the sixth grade, we got bused to a central school. And I met Lori on the sixth grade bus. You were childhood sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> not, not exactly. <laughs> not really. I wish. You wish, okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't ready. Okay. I wasn't ready, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I wanted to be okay. because my first memory of meeting her on the bus, of seeing her on the bus, was, um, and I told this, I believe, at the memorial service for Lori. I was sitting in the bus, and I was a big baseball fan. And I was looking at my baseball cards. Nice. I was a big Yankee fan. Yeah. And I was reading a card of Yankee rookies, and it said, this player has great potential. And um, I remember the player. People of a certain age may remember. A third baseman on the Yankees, his name was Cleet Boyer. Oh, uh, well, series <laughs> hero. Good fielder, right? But it, it said he had great potential. And I didn't know what the word potential meant. Down. Down. And I looked Stay. it up, or someone told me, as I was sitting there. And I looked at Lori, and I felt like, wow, she has a lot of potential, too. <laughs> <laughs> as a third baseman. <laughs> well, obviously, you're never going to forget that word. <laughs> yeah, that it? word stuck. That word stuck, and um, although I knew Lori through the rest of our school days, and Paco Good wants some attention. Paco. Yeah, give some Paco some Paco. attention. Paco! Surprise. So you knew Lori through your school so days? So I knew her, but not, um, not well, um, but well enough to know that if I was more mature, I would like her. Okay. You know? And that um, <laughs> after we finished high school, we didn't meet again until our 20th high school reunion. Interesting. Yeah. You both went, obviously. We both went. I didn't want to go, but... And so Lori had of, just... Sort of Christmas um, that was coming into play here. Yes. Someone took some pictures at that reunion that I've seen recently, and I see the moment of really engaging in conversation, okay. and I found out that Lori had been married, and she was in the end process of a divorce. And um, we started seeing each other, uh -huh. like right away the next week. It led to 25 years. 25 mm. years of bliss. 25 years. Wow. And I think you have one child? Yes. 
Yes. Well, now, did she get you into running or into any kind of sports uh, activity? I, I was a runner for about maybe eight or nine years before I met Lori. Uh huh. Lori, you know, grew up in an age where women were not athletic. That's true. Um, just on the first cusp of it. Yeah. And she would tell a story about being in gym class yeah. in high school and like you were supposed to run, but it was indoors and there'd be a curtain. And she'd get behind the curtain and just stay there and not move around because, you know, she didn't move around. Oh, because girls weren't supposed to do that? Yeah, she wasn't, wasn't something oh. that girls did or that she thought about herself as doing. But as we all know, she's done over 500 New York road, <laughs> road runners. What, uh, she made up for it. What, blouse, what made her, you know, open up that way? Shortly after we met, maybe within the first two or three weeks, she, I was running, I was running most weekends, and she came to a race, and she saw me do the race. Ah, you inspired her. Yeah, I guess mm. so. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, she was waiting at the finish line. Uh -huh. She said she saw all these people finishing, and she could see herself doing the same thing. And, and that was so the start, huh? she went home, and she started running the next day. Oh, and, yes, Paco. And she didn't stop. She didn't stop. Do she you know how, how she discovered the flyers? How did she discover the flyers? I believe what it was is, is that, you know, she'd run in the park all the time. I mean, the park was her home away from uh, home. Central Park, yeah. Yeah, and she started doing races. We moved into the city in Road 1993. Runners, yeah. yeah. She'd be doing races, and she kept noticing that there were all these people that were encouraging flyers. There'd be people on the sidelines. Goal flyers. Yeah. Exactly. And um, I think she wanted a family. Yeah, and, and it appealed to her as like, wow, this is a family of people yeah, who, yeah. Are, who are runners. Well, interesting, interesting. Well, let's talk about Paco for, <laughs> Paco. for a moment. How old is Paco? Paco, how old are you? <laughs> Looks He's big. gonna be three next three. month. Now, is that young for a dog? It sounds awfully, three sounds like a baby. He acts like a puppy. I mean, people <laughs> say. He acts like a puppy. Yeah, I mean, seven years to, Oh, okay, so series. he was much smaller when uh, Laurie had him then. Oh yeah, when we got him, we got him at two months old. And we got him because w after Laurie was diagnosed in August of 2011, she had worked for 30 years for, uh, in the field of occupational rehabilitation. Uh, she worked with people who Good boy, we're good out boy. of the workforce, uh -huh. good and boy. she helped them get back into the workforce. Wow! And she, um, she was a dedicated, she was a dedicated civil servant. Yeah. She worked for the state, and she was not, you know, the image of what the bad um, image of the civil servant. She was committed. She loved her work. She was dedicated. Um, and it she, was a big part of her and life. She loved physical fitness, obviously. Yes. When so when she retired. Retired. Shortly after she was diagnosed. And um, <laughs> Paco, she wasn't used to. Um, Paco, good boy, good boy. She wasn't used to not having structure and not, yeah. not filling her day and not having companionship, uh -huh. not interacting. Uh -huh. I was so, still working. Okay, Paco uh, helped fill that. So Paco was, um, Paco was her buddy, her buddy. companion. Did, did Paco run too? Or? Paco, yes. Yeah, Paco. Um, so we had Paco for a year. It was mm -hmm. a year from when we got Paco till when Lori died. Right. How did how did Paco miss Lori? Did did he exhibit that he knew something was wrong? Dogs are very very intuitive. Well, I'll tell you, there was one day that was about a week before Lori died, and that it looked like she was going to die that day, and she thankfully was at home. We had a hospice, they were great. She was in our bed. And there was one night that looked like it could be the last night. It felt like death was there. Yeah. And Paco came up to the bed and he made these sounds that were like, it wasn't barking, it wasn't crying, it wasn't wailing, it wasn't pleading, but it was some of all of that. Wow. As if he wanted to push something away. Uh -huh. And that was, it's, Lori had a strong will to live. I mean, she lived two years and three months after her diagnosis, which without the operation that um, Dino's father had is 
very long time for yeah. Yeah. She, was but, she was given six months at the outset. Right? Yeah. Given yeah. six months. Wow. But That's Paco about, uh, spent the last two weeks of Lori's life as Lori was more and more inert, uh, curled up in bed with her, and his head um, was on her face and on his and on her head. Mm. Good he, boy. He what was a good there. boy. He was there to the end. All mm -hmm. right. Listen, we're almost out of time, so give you guys some last closing thoughts, Dino. Any uh, Project Purple? Any uh, different? I think different on this, on the third annual one. We're back to August, so we're looking forward to a, a warm day. We're looking forward to having all the clubs from the greater New York area there. We, we added one a one-mile walk as well, great. so walkers are welcomed, and, and they'll be able to do the one-mile walk as well. And, you know, it, it's really a great opportunity to support Absolutely. our mission and remember Lori and uh, keep fighting for those still fighting. Absolutely. Got any future plans, any big plans for Project Purple? Any <laughs> big changes coming up, maybe uh, personally? Well, last year I did uh, three marathons in 22 days. Um, mm -hmm. I One thing that's different about us is I run the charity. I'm the founder, the chairman. Um, I have run probably up until this year 98% of the races we've been involved in. We've grown so big. Uh, we'll have over 500 runners nationwide, 26 different states represented last year wow. that have run through our program, through our charity program. So we've gotten so big where it's kind of unfair for me to say on race day of the New York Marathon, which I love. New York's yeah, my favorite yeah, yeah. marathon, to say, hey, I'm going to run the race. I'll see everyone at the finish line party. <laughs> right. And All here, right. you, you take the keys and drive the car for the All day. All right. So you got to do it on your, by yourself after dark or whatever. Exactly. Well, that's exactly. A, Maybe next you. year. Thank you so much for finding uh, Project Purple. Well, Alan, yeah, yes. Yeah, I want to add this. This is a, a, a really perfect marriage of the cause Dino backs. Uh, one of the things he hasn't said that I, I know is on his mind is that when he founded Project Purple, one of the guiding forces was that he wanted to be able to one day say, I founded an organization so somebody else wouldn't have to lose their dad or their mom or a family member. And he really busts his behind yeah. to make that happen. And to take Lori's race and bring it under his umbrella, uh, hopefully with as much support from the Flyers and the rest of the New York City running community, uh, I think is just an incredibly beautiful gesture. He recognized what Lori really stood for. She was an icon yep. of the running community. Yeah. And that was recognized at her memorial. Mary Wittenberg got up, having listened to what other people said, and. Right off the top of the head, and Mary's a very bright person. She synthesized a whole bunch of things and said some really beautiful things about Lori, things that she learned about Lori, and what Lori meant to the running community. And Dino, with the assistance of, of Neil's input, uh, and, and I appreciate my ability to have input into this as well, uh, really is carrying that torch forward. Uh, I hope people recognize what kind of bright light Lori was and continues to be, because every time we run loops in that park, we're covering her footsteps. Yep, yep. She really created a path in that yeah, park. Yeah. And uh, Dino has been kind enough to let me get involved in some of their projects. They do great stuff. It's not just helping families in need because they're grieving and, and, and channeling people to, to medical professionals. They've got a scholarship program where they provide scholarships to needy uh, students whose families have been impacted by, by uh, pancreatic cancer. And participating in that scholarship application process this year at, at Dino's uh, invitation was one of the more satisfying and, and moving experiences reading through how this disease has impacted people and what they want to do yeah. to try and make a difference with their careers after their education. Um, so I, I would just urge people to you know, come out. It's a fast course. It's USTA certified. Um, I think Brian Rossetti, our Flyers head coach, the defending champion. Defending champion. I believe yes. he's going to be back. So okay. all takers, he's willing to take you on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he holds the course record for the. Yes, uh, he does. So he yes. the course dreams. record for this yeah. two-year-old two race. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a beautiful place to run. I mean, Close you, right you, opportunity to run a race and then 
you ride the tram out, you ride the tram back, and you, you've got brunch. You can get brunch on the island. You can get brunch oh, right yeah, on yeah. First so or Second it's Avenue. It's, it's, so, and it's actually, people think it's remote. It's actually an ideal location. It's, it's part of Manhattan. It totally is. Totally it's a two by two area code. Yes. Exactly, exactly. One last thought from you. <clears throat> I, I saw that you guys got the Joe Kleinman Award. Yes. Now, that was after the memorial, I presume. We didn't learn we were receiving that until about a week or so beforehand because they kept it really under tight wraps. The who, so the pliers got it or you the got it? No, 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 th th not, not me. I, it wasn't, I wasn't worthy of it all by myself. <laughs> the, the club got it. And in fact, Mary invited everybody who was on the flyers at the NYRR awards ceremony that night on stage. Um, wow. Neil and I and Scott Cohen, who was instrumental in organizing the race the first year, he was the chair of the race committee. Um, went up and accepted the award, but they invited the whole club up there. And it meant a lot to us because a lot of heart and soul uh, was in Lori, and we tried to give that back. And that's why we got the award, because of how the club rallied around Lori. Yes, and yes. What I'm hoping is that they will continue to rally, and the running community will continue to rally well, around her spirit. Hopefully the show will, will it's help. Here. Uh, she, she's in this room with us. Yeah, she's yeah. really happy. The Flyers were very generous in that... Um, they gave me the, um, the the trophy to take home with me, uh -huh. and um, good boy, I have good it boy. in a prized place. Lori had many many trophies throughout her life. This is the one that I have that has been posthumous, and it means a lot. And um, as does the the race that's coming up on August eighth. That as these guys have been saying, Lori's life was about joy and about meaning and the race is an opportunity to extend that and well i will be there i might walk the mile or be a volunteer or something dino and i've been talking about this and this is not out there yet but project purple is going to give an award to the team that has the highest number of participants showing up at the race oh excellent excellent Exclusive here. Got to run with well exclusive. And it's not <laughs> just going to be an ice, an ice cream cone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Listen, thank you so much, guys. Will, thank, thank you. you for having thank us. This was much. really yeah, a thank pleasure. You. And thank you for Paco for being such a good dog. Good, not yeah. bad, Paco. Good. Give me five. <laughs>